Hey, peeps. Tis I, Pipe Cat. It is a somewhat warm, somewhat lovely Saturday morning here in New England. And uh, I just wanted to uh, touch on a few points today. Um, first of all, this is an appeal to people who might live near me in the vicinity of, uh, uh, of uh, central Massachusetts, where I live. And um, I've posted some local ads around here. I'm looking to start a pipe smoking, or just a pipe aficionado club or community here in my area. There really aren't any. There's uh, probably one or two B and M's that you can drive to in the local area, and they have their they have their uh, constituency, I'm sure. And uh, but that's different. That's like a customer connected base. I'm hoping to start something. Um, more uh, more communal um, where the only link is not necessarily that we all shop at the same stores or order from the same websites um, I would like to uh, I'd like to get some like-minded people together who'd be interested in uh, in uh, hooking up and uh, creating some sort of a local face-to-face -face forum I think that would be cool um, there's a lot of characters around here that I think should probably know each other. Um, if you're one of them, I'd like to know you. I'd like to know um, how you uh, how you enjoy a smoke. What kind of conversation you like to have over a nice smoke. And maybe what gear I have that you covet and you may be interested in uh, swapping for. Pipe swap, uh, you know, tobacco swap, and just good stories and a place for people to meet. I smoke here in my home. We could have a meeting here. If you have a nice, a beautiful, you know, rear deck of your home or something and you want to do it there, we can swap around. But anyway, leave me a comment or send me a PM um, letting me know if you're in the central Massachusetts area. Specifically, I'm near the city of Worcester. Um, if you're anywhere near that area and you'd like to hook up, and I'm talking about, you know, driving distance, an hour, you know, because um, I know there, there may not be a whole lot of people right in my immediate area who would want to just meet where it's convenient for me, you know, but um, that's, that's point number one. I'm looking to form a community in my area. Point number two. This is Maltese Falcon in my elf pipe. I can ignore that for a half an hour and it'll still be lit. This is the stuff that gives you the <laughs> what I call a Gomez. <laughs> if you remember the old Adams family, the old 60s version, Gomez Adams would reach into his pocket and take out a a little a little uh mini humidor, he'd have one on a table and he'd open it up and he'd pull out a cigar and it'd already be lit and he'd just start smoking it. Well, Mal Maltese Falcon gives me a Gomez once in a while because I'll put the pipe down and I'll go in there and I'll make a cup of coffee or I'll play with my cat or I'll check my messages or do something. Get on my work phones for a while and uh, then I'll come back out and I'll go to pick up the pipe and relight it and find out it still has an ember in it. It's still, still burning. So, uh, a Gomez, but uh, uh, the uh, the second uh, important point of this video is I'd like everybody to please wish uh, the piping artist Steph um, good health. She's hit with the flu, and um, I'd like to see her make some more videos pretty soon. Um, if you've never checked out the piping artist Steph's channel, check it out. Take a look at some of the... Uh, paintings she's done. Very interesting. She's got a great hands for that kind of thing. She's got a good eye and she's she is able to translate it to her hands. So uh, take a peek at, uh, at Steph's channel. Um, lastly,
to the who hit my sports car on Christmas Day and drove away. I know you're not watching this, but I want to wish you peace. I want to wish you blissfulness enough so that you can escape from the fears that rob you of your sense of responsibility. There was uh, no need for that to happen to me and just have them run away and stick me with the surcharges and the deductibles because it's a one car accident now and it's my fault because there can only be one fault and it was me. So, now I'm going to be without my car for a couple of weeks while they fix it and um, I couldn't even get it into the body shop. I, it, it's going in on, on Monday two days from now and uh, I'll have to drive some kind of a rental you know POS until I get my car back but things like that happen and I guess the point I'm trying to make is human beings I mean by definition they're only human people people do things that they're either not proud of or they're afraid that they did and they're afraid to own up to something and you know I think it's important to notice that uh, most people most people can handle that without anger. If you've ever, if you're a young guy, a girl, whatever, old lady, you're driving along and you suddenly strike someone's car and say, oh no, don't be afraid, you know? The idea here in America is that business handles that, that end of things. It's business. A car is just a machine. Money is replaceable, you know. Um, it just made me so, almost kind of sad to think that a person could do that and just kind of blow it off. Now, I was parked in a private driveway that day, far from the street. It's a driveway shared by several different apartment buildings. And it was Christmas Day, and there was slush on the driveway, and I had trouble making it up that driveway. Someone else did, too. Later on, as we were having our little gathering inside my sister's apartment, um, one of my sister's boyfriend was uh, standing by the kitchen door and looking out the window and said, this guy's having a lot of trouble making it up this driveway, whoever this was. And I glanced out, and I could see him kind of sliding back and forth, and I said, he's not going to make it all the way up. Um, he made it as far as the back of my car where I was and I said oh that was close and my sister's boyfriend says I don't think he hit you no he's given up he's leaving well now I know why he left um, I assumed that the person went down parked in the street and walked up the driveway but I guess no one ever did <laughs> they just kinda said oops and they took off um, doesn't matter that the car you hit is a nice car or a junky car um, it's your responsibility if you do a thing like that. I've gone on way too long about this. But again, um, whoever that person is, I feel bad for them. I mean, I, don't, I can't say I pity them because that's condescending. And I can't say that I'm not a little bit angry, but I'm angry at the situation, maybe not the person. <clears throat> uh, as I said, it, it, it's sad to think that somebody feels that they can't own a responsibility um, it was a pretty nice car that hit me, or at least that I think hit me. And um, uh, it's not like the person had no means or probably didn't have insurance. That doesn't, you know. And it's also unlikely that the person who hit it um, didn't realize they had hit it. I mean, it was a pretty good dent. They shifted my bumper over and everything, so. Later on that evening as I was driving home, um, I did strike something on a lonely rural route. Um, and uh, when, I called the, uh, when I called the police in that town, they said, yeah, we've had a lot of deer strikes along that road, so chances are whatever hit you was a deer, and it probably had just enough life left in it to run and leap off the road before you could 
you know, gather your senses and realize what it was. So, henceforth, not seeing it is not uncommon. Oh, ashes. Didn't realize how close to the bottom of that Gomez I was. But the, uh, the cops officially recorded it as a deer strike. I've done some uh, investigation since then because I was really not happy with that idea. It just doesn't sit well with me that that's what happened. I should have seen a big deer. I'm a very cognizant driver. I've got two big sport mirrors on this thing. I should be able to see behind me. I would have seen something coming at me. I was driving at a fairly low speed on an absolutely lonely road. I'd have seen something coming even from the side, even if it was coming in from behind. I might have hit a big ice moat or something that fell off a tree or off a power line because that would have caused the same sensation that I got when, I, when something hit me or I hit it going home that night. If I had hit a big, uh, a big, you know, dark colored ice ball, you know, roughly the color of the salty pavement because it was, it had just snowed. Um, I wouldn't probably have seen it, and once I had hit it hard enough to knock my alignment out, which it did do, um, it would have either disintegrated or, or shot off into the snowbank, and I wouldn't have found it anyway when I got out of my car. I did get out of my car, and I looked around. I saw nothing. Um, there were little chunks of ice here and there all over that road. I might have missed seeing one and just ran it over. And when I got out and looked at my car to see what I thought hit me, um, I found nothing, and I found the dent. I found nothing in the road, but I found the dent in the car. And I thought, what, what the hell could have done this? Now that I'm putting all the pieces back together and driving back and forth and looking at what, you know, at that area, and having seen my sister's driveway again, I'm pretty sure that that dent was there when I was headed home. I wouldn't have seen it because it was on the passenger side. And when I got out to go home, I just got in on the driver's side, didn't bother doing a circle check of my car. Why would I? I didn't think anything had hit it. But I think someone did hit it that, that day. Now, so anyway, um, it's just something that uh, I've been chewing on, and it helps me to get it off my chest to share it with you who watch my videos. Because it's a point of human nature, and that's really what I'm about. And um, this poor person, uh, either they ran away from an accident or they didn't realize they had had one. Either way, I feel bad. You know, if you can't realize that your car hit something, you shouldn't be driving. And the cars in that driveway were pretty nice, even that one um, that we saw struggling. So... Uh, if you, you know, if you're either drunk or old or otherwise not cognizant enough to be operating a motor vehicle, you shouldn't be operating one. And if you feel fearful enough to run away from an accident simply because you caused damage and your car didn't really sustain any, that's just lousy, you know. And I feel bad that anyone would think that way. It gives, uh, it lends credence to the, uh, to the local title of mass hole that we get. Drivers in Massachusetts are referred to as mass holes. Um, I know my language is getting a little bit blue. Sorry about that. But uh, anyway, thanks for listening. Uh, I think I feel better about it now that I've shared it with you. So thank you. And uh, I hope you all have a, a wonderful weekend. Steph, I hope you feel better. Take care, everybody.